Hey guys, it's Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and a massive, great, big, super welcome to our Freddie King course. And this is a 20 lesson uh, course all about probably my, I'm going to say my second favorite blues player ever. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie, Clapton's always been my favorite. I know it's not a popular decision these days and I completely understand that, but he's still up there because it was the first guy that I listened to. But Freddie King, in terms of just how it shaped my, my playing and my kind of blues character, Freddie King is up there. He is the best. It's some kind of combo of vocals like Al Green, like kind of soul vocals that can also just, just absolutely soar. It's got the power of Freddie Mercury combined with the elegance of Al Green or something like that. And then having this guitar that feels like it's just this extension to his soul, his personality, his character, his his massiveness just comes through this instrument. And that's what I love about it. It feels like there's not too much thinking going on. It's just in the moment, pure love of the blues, of the instrument, of everything that he's playing. And if you ever, I would highly recommend going and checking out some of his live videos you've never have, because that's where you really see this character. Now, in this course, I'm gonna be aiming to get that character across to you, to show you um, through a, a variety of different kind of songs, examples, solos, licks, theory, how Freddie King is able to play like that. Of course, you need all of that stuff, but then we're gonna be talking about, you know, how to really start dynamically working with the blues, how to, how to turn this off and turn this on, right? Through your, your heart, through your soul and try and get it onto this guitar. So there's loads that's gonna go into this, guys. And in this very first unit, we're gonna be tackling our first solo, okay? We're gonna start with the kind of hard-hitting, more aggressive blues stuff that he does. So lots of work within the minor pentatonic, kind of the, the attack with the fingers, how we're gonna get that aggression. And we're actually gonna start in this very first lesson by showing you the grounding of Freddie King. Just a few really cool tips that you're gonna to need to kind of understand before we properly dive in to this whole course. So, when you are ready, when you're ready, Freddie, Pick up your guitar and let's get started. Just a quick one guys, before we carry on, if you haven't already, please go over to the website where you can find access to the full course, including the interactive tab, the write-ups, the backing tracks, all the fretboard diagrams, the entire thing, the way it should be viewed, head on over there via the link in the description. Now, the, the first thing I want to say, first thing I want to talk about is his pick. <laughs> now, um, his pick, right? So let me just get this in thing. So this is, this is the pick that I'm gonna be using for this course, right? So just so you can see this uh, nice and clearly, what I might try and do is get that really close in the camera there, look at that. So I'm just using a pretty bog standard, quite a heavy pick um, and it's, pretty solid and just, just a kind of normal size pick really. Um, that's what I'm using for this course. Um, but I want to explain that Freddie King typically uses finger picks. So the kind of picks that you'd actually literally attach to your finger, you've probably seen them um, knocking around. Um, you know, quite often kind of country players or, or kind of bluegrass players might play them or typically when you see people doing kind of this kind of stuff. You know, that kind of thing, right? You might see finger picks. Um, but in this case, it's Freddie King. He's using the finger picks. So you'll see him literally attack solos like this. <laughs> and, and it's all of this kind of like, it's, it looks like he's just using his fingers, but he's definitely got finger picks on the end of them. Now, I don't think we need that. I've made, I've made a decision, it took me a few days to decide on it, but I don't think we need that to be able to play like Freddie King. After all, it's unrealistic to be like, oh, when I'm playing this song, I'm gonna go and learn everything I know about finger picks and play with finger picks and then put that down for the rest of the gig or the rest of the, the playing at home to my family or whatever it is. It, it's, it's much better to be able to just acknowledge that, that he plays like that, and see if we can get that into our normal style of playing with a pick. So I've managed to get that into my playing using the pick, you know, rather than having to sit there and use, um, completely change how I play fundamentally. That's not what we want to do. That's not how we're gonna work with this player study. I want you to be able to take all these ideas and these kind of concepts, 
and be able to work with them within your own playing. So that's why we're gonna be using a pick. So I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way first. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is D blues, the D blues. <laughs> Freddie King loves D blues, and I think that's probably because of his vocal. It obviously suits him, that key of D blues. So what do I mean by D blues? I mean that we've got a one, four, five in D. So if we start up on the 10th fret here, okay, we've got a one, four, five, that'll be a D, a G, and an A. So we've got this kind of one, four, five going on in the key of D, and that typically is where we're at with Freddie King. So um, it's kind of a good thing to know. I, I know it with the other guys as well. Like I know that Clapton loves A uh, or C. I know that BB King loves B flat. I, I don't know if that's just because he knows his name is BB and it's B flat. I don't know. But he, he uses B flat a lot. Um, you know, Albert King uses a lot of a lot of A. Again, G, like Stevie Ray, uh, but D tuned. So you, you kind of get used to what kind of blues players use what key and Freddie King, I think just because of that high soaring soulful vocal that he's got, he just loves D, he just loves D. So that's really important because we're gonna be focusing the whole player study around D. Um, and I think that's great because it really allows us to get settled with some of these more advanced concepts of crossing over major, minor, combination licks in one place. We can get settled with them in just the key of D before we start moving them. So it's, it's gonna be great for us. Now, what I wanna discuss here in this key of D is why we're able to start using a combination of major and minor. So these blues keys, um, it's the idea of using dominant seventh chords, of course. Uh, so like I showed you, we got the kind of one, the four, the five, and they're all dominant chords. And that's super important to understand because that's the, our opening to be able to use minor and major pentatonic. So let me just kind of walk you through this, right? If I look at the chord of D7, all right? That's the first chord in a D blues, okay? The notes that we've got there are D, that's the root, okay? We've got the major third, which is F sharp, okay? We've got the seventh, which is a C, and we've got the fifth, which is an A, okay? But that's, I'm not playing it in that version. I'll play it there, so we've got the A, okay? So we've got the notes D, F sharp, A, and C, okay? Super important, all right? Um, then in the G7, we've got the notes G, okay, that's the root. We've got the major third, which is a B. We've got the D, which is a fifth. And we've got the F, which is your flat seven. So we've got the notes G, B, D, and F, okay? And then in an A7, we've got the notes A, C sharp, which is my third. We've got the notes E, and G, which is my seventh. Okay, so you can literally do an arpeggio. Root, third, fifth, flat seven. A, C sharp, E, and G. Okay. So that's all well and good. They're the notes we're kind of playing with. And let's compare those to the minor and major pentatonic notes. Okay, so if you look at the D7 straight up, okay, um, you can see that within the D7, from the major pentatonic, we've got a D. We've got that major third, okay, which is within our major pentatonic, okay? Because remember, our major pentatonic for D is D, E, F sharp, A, B, and then D again, okay? So you can see all those notes, okay, are in that D7, right? So, or most of those notes are in that D7. We've got the, the D, the F sharp, the A, and then the only difference is we're adding in the C, that's our dominant vibe, isn't it? That's, that's the kind of portal to the minor. Because then if you look at that C, that's how we're thinking D minor suddenly. Okay, so within that first chord itself, you know, we're really thinking that you can play the major over that, of course. Most of the notes are in that chord, but we've also got that minor element, that flat third in there as well from the D minor pentatonic. Okay. So long story short there, that's why the minor and the major work so beautifully. That kind of, the, the most of the chord is obviously a D major chord, so it works perfectly with D major. But that flat seven, that, in, that kind of invites the minor pentatonic, because it's got that flat seven right there. Okay. So 
that's that's a really important thing to understand. Then when we go to the four chord, the G, you can see that the notes G, B, D, and F, okay, they're all beautifully located in that D minor pentatonic, okay? Okay, so if we go through that, we've got the D, we've got the F, we've got the G, okay, and then we've got our uh, A there, then we've got a C, and then we're back to the D, okay? So they're all, apart from the B, they're all located in that minor pentatonic, okay? And the B, that's located in the major. <laughs> How wonderful is that? Okay, so that's actually located in the major pentatonic. So you can see now, analyzing each individual chord, that there's crossover all the way through it. So that second chord, that G7 chord, that's got loads of elements from the D minor pentatonic, um, but it's also got one element from the D major. So again, we have that crossover. Equally, the A7, finally, A7. Okay, that's got the A, okay, so that's in both. Uh, minor and major. C sharp, which is in the full D major scale, so that kind of hints at the major again. Um, you've then got the uh, E, which is of course in the major, D major pentatonic. And then you've got the G, okay, which is again in our minor pentatonic. Okay. Okay. So all the way through those three chords of dominant, We've got crossover of major, minor. We've got elements of that D minor pentatonic. We've got elements of that D major pentatonic, sometimes even the D major scale. So we're always able to kind of reference both. But if I was to give you one tip to go away with before we hit the next video, I would say that over the one chord and the five chord, it sounds great doing major. It just sounds really good, right? So if I've got the one chord of D and the four chord is G and the five chord is a. Right, let's just turn that up a little bit. Now, the of the one chord, I, I, you know, the major sounds really good. So let's have a listen to that. So D major. Over the four chord, I really like the minor sound. Over the five major. So major over the one. Minor over the four. Major over the one. Over the five, sorry, and then back around. Right? So don't worry if this is just all over the place for you at the moment. I just want to say some really key concepts. I'm going to show you how to make this applicable to your playing in the Freddie King style. Okay. So two things to summarize. One, we're using a pick, even though Freddie King very much uses his finger picks. <laughs> we're not going to go for that, but we're going to get the same effect. And two, we're going to use the whole thing. The whole course is going to be in D blues. Okay. And because of that, we're going to be able to constantly combine our D major, our D minor pentatonic. And one quick takeaway from that is that over the one and the five chord, try using your major pentatonic. And over the four chord, try using your minor pentatonic. Okay, we'll be getting into that. There's obviously room for completely changing that up, as you'll see. But that's a really good little opening advice. All right then, guys. So. There's our first lesson. It's a bit of a preamble, ready for the next one where we're gonna start looking at this track. All right, that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out the next lesson, you will be able to find it here. If you want to start from the beginning of the playlist, you can find that here. Massive appreciation. Please do like and share this content with all of your guitar friends. I'll see you next time.